Hi, wife. What's your name? That's brutal. The truth is, I've never failed. <laughs> um, because failed would mean it was done, it stopped. So I've never failed, right? The business is still here, we're still growing. I've made many mistakes along the way, but I've never failed. So we are hosting Eco this morning, um, which is a group in out of, well, basically Fenton Freedom Center. And uh, we've been in this group for quite a while, just doing all kinds of good things in the community. And uh, we meet once a month. So today we get to do it at our office. I didn't know you could get OJ at Panera. As soon as we kind of stay focused on what we need to be focused on, God right away starts bringing these things to you, right? And, and this is leading all to this thing of how we're too darn hard on ourselves. So I got to thinking about that a lot because I'm hard on myself and, uh, and we all are. And then there's a fine line between being too hard on yourself and accepting mediocrity or accepting failure or accepting the world as it is instead of trying to make a change, you know? So the question is around fail fast and kind of this fad that's going on right now. I don't know. I mean, all these catchphrases, you know, at the end of the day, I think that you've got to do something you're passionate about, um, but you can't be afraid to fail. You know, my son, uh, Rocco, who's 12 right now, is playing basketball and as he's starting to get better and he's playing more uh, because this, is, this was his first year playing. Now don't get it twisted. He's a scrapper, right? He's needs to work on his tail off out there, but now he's starting to shoot the ball more and things like this. And he said, dad, I'm getting blocked. My shots are getting blocked a lot more than they used to. And I said, well, that's because you're taking a lot more shots than you used to. So it's really simple. Like you can't be afraid to fail, you know, because I told him, well, what's the alternative? Just you never shoot again and you'll never be blocked again. You know, and he's like, oh, heck no, I want to shoot. Well, then you, if you want to shoot, you got to deal with it's going to come with it. And it's the same thing in business, you know, building a business, whatever it may be, you're going to have setbacks. And, uh, but they're learning moments. And I think most of most people, what they do, because that's our society is when they have that setback, they blame everyone else around them. You know, they, they have that mindset of, well, it's his fault. It's her fault. I, you know, if this didn't happen, if that didn't happen, it's out of my control. It wasn't my fault. Listen, if I get friggin' rear ended by a car, that was my fault. I'm in the car. I put myself there. And that's how I just look at everything is that everything is my fault. Cause if it's not my fault, how can I fix it? On the day of International Happiness, we took like, I think we had 12 people and 100 balloons, these big smiley face balloons, and just went downtown Brighton handing them out. And, um, you know, it's so neat because you're, it's, that downtown is so different than here, you know, or most downtowns for that matter. It's very quaint and it's kind of all right there. Yeah. And, uh, but there was an instance where uh, one of the young guys on our team, he's probably 26, right? I mean, young. And, um, and there weren't a lot of people out, so they started actually handing them out to cars. Like people were stopping and they would hand them out to the cars. Anyway, he, uh, he, the lady on the passenger side, and we have it on video actually, um, rolls down the window and he hands her the balloon and she's crying. And come to find out her uncle had just passed. And so she was going to her family's house to make the arrangements. And, and the interesting part of the story is like, prior to going out and do, you know walking out of the office with all these balloons, Stacey Dahl said, listen, I know, you know, this is, can feel awkward, but you never know who, who you're going to impact. And so, and then it was like, you start thinking deeper, like, okay, well, who's the person that got the balloon that now is gonna go give it to someone else? Do. John, good to see you, brother. Oh. Yep. Here he is. Well, so he's he's got got a bird. Bird. What happens when you have a bird happen happen. for souls? Oh, gosh. I don't. So when, when, during the growth of our business, did I have a failure and learn from it? And as you saw, I had to think about that for a while because I'm trying to answer it correctly, but the truth is I've never failed. <laughs> um, because failed would mean it was done, it stopped. So I've never failed, right? The business is still here, we're still growing. I've made many mistakes along the way, but I've never failed. And that's the difference. Um, I'm not afraid to make mistakes. People are. And because they're afraid to make mistakes, they end up never doing anything. So maybe they're just viewing it wrong. It's not failure, it's just a mistake. 
failure is when you quit. Failure is when you stop. Failure is when you hit a dead end and there is no future, then you fail. So making mistakes isn't a failure. Maybe the failure is being afraid to make mistakes. Bam. How did I get started in real estate? Well, um, I was intermediately, how do you say that? Intermediate, intermittently living in Canada, in actually in Quebec, uh, in a little town about this big called Messalangy. And if you can't speak French, you would call it Mason Angers. But um, I would be there eight months, come home for four, be there eight months, come home for four, and I just got wore out on it. And so, and I was there racing horses. That was the purpose of why I was there. I was driving and training horses. And so I moved back home, sold everything, and uh, started flipping houses, which is pretty ironic because I don't even own a screwdriver to this day. Um, but a couple of us got involved in it and started flipping houses. And you know, we did. We had some luck, and the market turned. And I said, well, then I'm going to get into real estate. You know, and uh, that was that. And everyone laughed at me. They said, you're crazy, man. The market's the worst it's ever been, and you're going to get into real estate. And I said, yep, I'm going to get into real estate, and I'm going to make it happen. And uh, well, as they say, the rest is history. What's up? What the hell are you watching? I heard Kevin, but I don't see Kevin. How's it going? Back here. What up, homie? How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. My crew. This Josh is your Zachary. crew. How you doing? Okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So my name's Kevin. I see that you're looking at five two nine one Falling Leaf Drive and four six or two six four two Ash Avenue in Ann Arbor. What What's a good time to go take a look at those properties? Hello. Hi, wife. What's your name? Uh, That's brutal. And then after I confirm all the appointments, I'll follow up and get in touch with you. And we'll go through expectations of the first time home showing and everything we can expect for Monday. All right, John, I'd be honored to have some coaching. So, so again, like instead of, well, I got you here, right? Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Well, I have you on the phone, mm -hmm. right? Just, just a little more professional. Like, more professional. Yeah, I hear you. More saying. professional. I thought that was good, right? Like you're taking control of it because they're a little bit unsure. Yeah. So they want someone to take control. So by giving them a date is good. John, it's a pleasure to have you here today. We're in Brighton, baby. We are in our Brighton office. We are at 305 Main Street. Right across from, shout out to Brighton Coffee House in theater. That's my favorite coffee spot. <laughs> that is my favorite coffee. So let's talk about why we opened the space here in Brighton and what brought you here. You know, it's so funny. Everybody asks me, how's the Brighton office doing? And I'm like, how do you want me to quantify that for you? Because they think about sales and I'm not thinking about the sales that occur here. Right. I'm thinking about the relationships that we're building here. So right. this space specifically was never meant to house a ton of agents. It will morph into that, mm -hmm. right? But for us, it's a way for us to, to be involved in the community, you know? Yeah. And that's what this space is all about. That's why it looks like a darn art gallery in here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we've had great events here. Uh, ladies night out, we, yeah. I mean, we had we had hundreds and hundreds of people through yeah. here. Uh, it's just a way to get involved in the community and we want to give yeah. to the community instead of just walk in here and expect to get. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you spoke about the ladies night and we had the holiday glow we were in town yeah. for. That was, that was right after that our was opening. Awesome. So we got a taste of a few of the events going on. Summerfest is going to be big. And with our location here right on Main Street, I mean, to be able to coincide with all the yeah. community events they already have going and be able to open our doors and just have, you know, come in another place to relax and have fun. And, and you've done a great job, man. You've been down thank here you. helping all the time and been very involved in that. So we thank you for that because thank we, you. we need we need those people leading yeah. this charge. You know thank what I mean? You. Because there is going to be a point where this will become mm -hmm. more of an operating real mm -hmm. estate office. But when people ask me, how's it doing? You know, they're thinking like, yeah. tying sales to an office and yeah. I'm not thinking that way. Yeah. The success of this office is based on the success of our company. Yeah. Obviously, if we don't sell homes, um, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Um, but the success of this space is the relationships that we build mm -hmm. um, and, and the ability for us to be involved in the community. Yeah. Pleasure yeah. to meet you, man. Hey, no, hey, yeah, take care. Have a blessed day. Yeah. Brother, pleasure. Yeah. Take care. Pleasure. Thanks for all your help with Kevin. Of course. Yeah. Jab Thank Our you. Our pleasure. You know, I think so many times people are afraid to fail or they're, you know, they're worried about what other people are gonna think. And I just, uh, that's shallow, you know? Um, I live in a, uh, in, a, in a mindset that God is gonna give me grace in everything that I do. 
And, uh, and so I embrace those moments where, you know, I screw up or we make a decision, it's the wrong one or whatever it is, you know? Um, but I think because I'm not afraid of it, I'm able to actually limit those things, those mistakes a lot because I'm going with my gut. I'm going with what I've learned and I'm going with my gut instinct and I'm not afraid to do that. See, most people will, will know what they should do, but they don't do it. I'm just doing it. And it's worked out pretty well so far.